Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much uh, for coming on this afternoon. I'm Paul Williams. I'm one of the trustees of the Greater Manchester Transport Society, and it's my honour to introduce the distinguished panel that you see in front of you today. Um, we're here for two ceremonies, two celebrations. Um, the first uh, will be the formal return of the Golden Key of 1901 to the Society. Um, Dennis will explain the story, um, but in a nutshell, in 1901, the Lord Mayor of Manchester was presented with a Golden Key, which he put in his pocket and took home, and no one ever saw it again. So it's a delight that the current Lord Mayor of Manchester, Councillor Tommy Judge, uh, will be in a position to return it for me. <laughs> Uh, so that will be the first part of the celebration. The second part, uh, which we're very proud and, and pleased to welcome, uh, Felicity Goody, CBE, uh, who is Deputy Lieutenant in Greater Manchester, who uh, has adjudicated and is now uh, in a position to award the Queen's Award for Voluntary Service uh, to the Society, the charity that runs this museum, uh, a huge honour for us. Um, so what I'd like to do first is I'd like to hand over to our Chairman, Dennis Talbot, for some introductory remarks. Thanks, Paul. Uh, I've seen a lot of familiar faces around here. Thank you very much for uh, coming to see us today. Uh, there's quite a lot of absent friends because we chose to have this event in August, so a lot of people are on holiday. So we do have a lot more members than uh, you see assembled in front of us. Uh, and this really is aimed at all of us because it's a, getting this award is a collective thing. We'll, we'll move on to that uh, a little later. But uh, Greater Manchester Transport Society, started the Selneck Transport Society in 1970 uh, and morphed then into the Greater Manchester Transport Society when Selneck became Greater Manchester Transport in 1974. Uh, in 1979 we were given the opportunity to open this building as a museum, uh, portraying these fine vehicles you see around, most of which were either off the road already by then or just about to be taken out of service and Greater Manchester Transport were very keen that they should be representative of all the former operators uh, from the Greater Manchester area. So we have Berry, Lee, Northwestern, Rochdale behind us, and Stockport, and plenty of others, uh, all of whom, of course, have their uh, distinctive liveries, and I'm sure many of you know only too well. Uh, society has gone from strength to strength over that period of time, uh, kept the museum open to the public for now 42 years. Uh, yeah, 17, that's right, yes, my maths is correct, yeah, that's 42 years. So it's quite a, a record of uh, achievement. We thought we were doing well when we got to 25 years, and I showed the uh, Earl of Wessex around, uh, that was uh, also some years ago now. But uh, it's really thanks to all the people, members you see here today, our absent friends are set at the moment, and those sadly who are no longer with us, that we've uh, managed to keep the museum open and uh, being a, a great success throughout. And if you were here slightly earlier this afternoon, you see lots of families around as well who were our main audience these days who are really keen to come and see all the buses. And the, younger, the youngsters are particularly keen on large red vehicles with big wheels, so uh, that's nice to know. <laughs> yeah, so uh, the museum itself, uh, we'll just uh, say a few words about it. was, uh, say, opened in 1979. It started life as a bus carriage uh, when the depot which we're celebrating the opening of, uh, opened in 1901, was the largest tram depot in the, so the United Kingdom, probably in the world. Don't worry about that. Uh, uh, so it, it opened in 1901. This building we're standing in now opened in 1926 as a bus garage and then the express buses, very similar to the one you see in there, uh, which ran further afield than the trams. Uh, to Haywood, Gentley, other places where they feel the tram line tram. Uh, and then the uh, depot closed as a bus garage in the late 1950s, which turned over to the post office for about 20 years, became vacant as they moved out, and that's how we got the opportunity to open it as a museum. One of the first vehicles to come in was the one you, should, you see reversing in. Now, don't worry, it will stop before it gets to go. Uh, this was. Um, 1951 bus, which spent all his life next door at Queen's Road, uh, to 1971 when he was born for preservation. And some of the people who were involved with that are in the audience today, so he did a grand job. I'm sure 
noticing the uh, the key. serving volunteers whose uh, diaries go back to the early days of the society and even before that to uh, the late 1950s when other societies uh, interested in local transport were uh, being formed in the area. So I just hand over to uh, Peter. Uh, good afternoon, Lord Mayor, David Maras. Can I just mention two members of the staff that can be here who are great friends to the museum. Um, among the many hundreds of tram and bus drivers and conductors, two joined up here. One was Ray Dunning, who started here in 1948. He did 38 years until 1986. Sadly died in 1992 or 3. He was a great photograph collector, and it's his work which formed the basis of our photographic collection in the archive. The second job I'd like to mention is Ron Barton. Black Ray started as a conductor at the Stepo in 1962 and he did 44 years. They tried probably driving after three years. 44 years, ran through 2006 and um, he suddenly died just six years ago. Now, Ron used to drive the museum into his bus service that we do every Heritage Weekend and he was his conductor, hence the uniform. And the other thing that Ron did, he was a great specialist in the personal records that we got in the office. All the staff that work here. And sometimes people would come and visit him. Oh, we don't work here, actually. You usually find the staff there for them. You could get it from Ticotten. Imagine how made up they were. Anyway, they were to go home with that. Anyway, it is now my privilege and a pleasure and a great honour to present you with the, uh, the golden key to this. <laughs> I've worked for Greater Manchester Passenger Transport Executive for over 30 years. I, employ, I got employed first of all in 1987. I've worked at bus stations across Greater Manchester, mainly in the south, where I was, that, that's my area where I lived and everything. But when you know what it's like chasing the overtime, you go anywhere where there's money being offered to you, you go anywhere. So it was, a, it, it, it was a great career. It's a great career and I've got some stories, I've got ladies here, I'm not going to be able to tell you some of the stories, but <laughs> I've got some great stories and everything. One of the ones I remember, I was, was saying to the chairman before when we was coming in, when, in 1996 when the bomb went off in Piccadilly, in, in, near the Arndale, and uh, the, the, the whole city centre was closed off for, for a few days. I remember I was doing early, early duty at Manchester Airport bus station, and I was a mobile in those days, I think they'd be a band. To, 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 to go around and check in on bus stops and shelters and tendered services operate up and down the, the region. So uh, I got a phone call saying to get into Manchester straight away because someone had gone off in Manchester. Anyway, I got into Manchester, got onto Bearman Street where we had a little depot and everything and we operated out of there. And then we, I think it was on a Monday or the Tuesday, we managed to get services operating again in, in, in Piccadilly. Or in, on Portland Street outside the Scottish Widows, and that's where all the sort of South Manchester buses were all going off that stop outside Scottish Widows. And uh, I remember they gave me a megaphone, and I was like traffic control, if you like. I'm there shouting buses that are coming up from to, to be loaded and everything. And uh, I remember a few, a few arguments and a few discussions with drivers who, who said, It's not my time to go yet. I said, Well, going off my watch today, you go when I tell you to go because we need to get and I remember shouting at where these buses were going. One of the directors from Greater Manchester, I won't tell you his name, came out to me and he says, It's amazing, Tommy, that you, you, you know where all these buses go for going to. Because I'm shouting out all the buses and where the destinations and all that. And I said, What do you mean? He says, The knowledge you've got 
I said, I've got no knowledge. I said, it says it on the front of the bus. It's a source the so-called powers that we used to think of us and everything, and they, they didn't even know what we was doing. Now. <laughs> anyway, ladies and gentlemen, visiting the Museum of Transport today brings back many memories for me because I worked with many of these buses for over 30 years during my career in public transport. I remember travelling on some of the old, several of the old black old back roads. I used to live on Grafton Street and then so we Oxford Road covered over so we went past the bottom of the street. And one of the great pastimes we used to have as kids was jumping on the back and trying to get lift out to the hole in eight and jumping <laughs> on another one bringing it back up again. And I remember conductors, where's the guy that's a conductor just the conductors looked like cowboys in them days, didn't they? They had their machine strength dead low on the thing like that. And they'd be kicking you to get you off the bus. <laughs> What's it? People say it was dangerous. We thought it was great fun, but people say it was dangerous anyway. As Lord Mayor of Manchester, it gives me a great honour for me to be asked to return the gold key to the place it was made to open over 100 years ago on the 6th of June 1901. On the day the first electric tram cars in Manchester paraded from the Town Hall to Albert Square to Queen's Road and where Lord Mayor Thomas Briggs used it in a ceremony to open up the new tramcar shed, which was the largest of its type in the country at that time. I now have the pleasure of returning this key. It's not like it's sitting in the Lord Mayor's finger, we will disappear when it does I now they're pre they're presenting the key to Dennis, the chairman of the Museum Society. So here, yeah, Dennis, it took long enough to get here, but I didn't have it, it wasn't in my pocket. No. <laughs> successful in getting this key, as you see before you now. Um, then we got other donations as well followed on, and they paid for the, there's a case embedded in the wall of the tea room over there, you might be able to see. It doesn't look very finished yet, but that's because uh, we uh, have a little roof problem. Uh, and the, uh, being a very old building, the roof leaks out, landlords are great, and they are on top of all these things, but the contractor can't come and finish the job until the end of August. So that's why we don't have our brand new display panel which is all ready to go up and we'll finish it off and then that's where the key will live. Uh, so for the moment it's, it's not going in there but we'll try and get in there later on today and uh, show you what it will look like in its, in its new home, its resting place. But uh, I don't think the, we said that the previous Lord Mayor <coughs> kind of ran off with the key but it, uh, reading about him in here, <laughs> Thomas Briggs had been Lord Mayor for two years. That's why we have done as well to give it some that's right. <laughs> 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 me too. So uh, we don't think he uh, really ran off, but I think it was actually presented to him. It does actually say very tiny, tiny writing on the back, which is a beautiful thing. So, presented by the Tramways Committee to the Right Honourable Thomas Briggs, Lord Mayor of Manchester, on the occasion of the opening of the first electric tram, tram route and the Queen's Road car shed, June 6th, 1901, as you said. So we had kind of hoped that it would have been June 6th, 2021, it would have been 120 years, but sadly, obviously, <coughs> we couldn't do that. But uh, I'd just like to close by thanking all those people, and there are some representatives in the audience today, 
who did donate in that very rapid Facebook appeal because without all your support we wouldn't have this key here and there'd be no, uh, no event to talk about. So thank you very much and to those who couldn't be with us today as well. Thank you. Second part of the ceremony, I'd like to introduce or call up and introduce uh, Anthony Woody, Deputy Lieutenant, Greater Manchester, uh, who, on behalf of the Lord Lieutenant, who would normally make this presentation, we're very pleased to uh, welcome you to uh, this award, which we're really proud to receive. Thank you very much, yes. Lord Mayor. Uh, well, I'm, I'm not sure I have quite how I follow the Lord Mayor because I can't claim to have ever driven a bus. I have driven a, a, a few trucks in my time, but not a bus. And I did know that uh, laboured extremely well because in my uh, in my youth um, I, I was a BBC's industrial correspondent. So many of the engines in these buses, I did know their manufacturers really quite well. So it's a great pleasure for me to come here. It was a great pleasure for me to come and be asked to be an assessor. Um, uh, when uh, the society was nominated for a Queen's Award um, because uh, being nominated for a Queen's Award is really a, a great honour in its own, uh, its own right um, but there's no guarantee that you're actually going to win one even having been nominated. These are highly sought after. Queen's Award for Voluntary Service recognises the phenomenal work that uh, many volunteers, particularly up and down the country, belonging to all sorts of groups, uh, do on behalf of society, uh, of society and their local communities, making, frankly, making the world a better place. And I can't think of a more prime example than the Manchester Transport Society. I was absolutely blown away when I came here. It seems a very long time ago, Dennis. Um, it was pre-COVID, um, pre of course, pre, pre the lockdown. And I walked in here and it was just a hive of industry. Um, there were so many of you volunteers. I don't know if any of you, were, I know some of you were here this, uh, that day. Chris was certainly here and I met a number of you. But there were so many volunteers here that day. And it's the Queen's Award, this. Uh, the Queen makes this award to recognise the work of volunteers um, for organisations like this. But as I say, it's, it's highly competitive. So winning it really is a tremendous accolade. Uh, when I came here, I, I, the, one of the first things that struck me was the smell. It's a, a, a wonderful smell. You probably don't, no, no, it's a nice smell. You probably don't notice it anymore. But uh, I, you know, I walked in today, this afternoon, and immediately the smell came to me. Um, it's marvellous, isn't it? It's this lovely warm smell of engines and bodywork and so forth. And it reminds me of my childhood. Because, of course, I used buses in my childhood. I was teased not long ago by a friend of mine who said, you haven't been on a bus for years. I'm going to take one on a bus. Um, uh, and it's true, because for many years I've driven a car. I've not been on a bus. But I used to love buses. And my husband was beside himself in knowing that we were coming here today because he's been desperate to come here. And he's been badgering Chris on, um, on, on all sorts of things. But he particularly wanted to see those lovely clips with the, with, the, uh, with the paper tickets um, that, uh, that used to be punched. And Chris has just told me that in fact, there was one man whose job it was, that at the end of the day, they emptied the, the machine that punched the holes in the tickets, and they had to count every single little tiny um, randle of paper um, and, and catalog them according to their different colors and therefore their different values to reconcile the number of tickets that had been punched and sold uh, to the amount of money that would, had been taken. How do you fancy a job like that? I don't imagine anybody would do a job like that. But one of the other things that, that really struck me when I visited was that I, I have never been, I've been to many museums in my life, um, and I've never been to a museum where so many of the major artifacts um, are owned by the volunteers because it's the volunteers who themselves have bought them and restored them. Um, and I cannot imagine that there are many museums where the people who work in them actually ask their families for big birthday presents of bits for an engine or <laughs> new covers for the seats 
or another piece of metalwork, but I happen to know that there are many people here, including one standing behind me, who regularly does that to his family. I mean, it's just remarkable. So this museum has been going now for 40 years. It is operated, in fact, 42 years now. It is operated on behalf of the Transport for Greater Manchester, but it is entirely operated by voluntary effort. And although you've got, how many, how many um, members have you got of the society? 350. 350 members of the society, but there, I know there are 53 active working volunteers. And between you, the year before lockdown, I think you put in something like 17,500 hours of voluntary work. That's incredible. Um, and the work isn't just about restoring um, these wonderful buses. Um, and the engines inside them, and all the other artifacts that you, uh, that you collect. And of course, there's a huge archive here as well. Um, uh, uh, Peter made some reference to it. Uh, an enormous archive, which is, I know, a resource utilized by people all over the world. So there's all of that. But besides that, the other thing that this, uh, this museum does so brilliantly is it not only welcomes visitors in, and they have something like, you have something like 20,000 visitors a year now, you are one of the, in fact, one of the top rated visitor attractions in Greater Manchester, and a fully accredited museum, and that's no mean feat, I can tell you. To be a completely, a fully accredited museum nationally is really an, another huge accolade. But you, you also um, you have uh, enormous numbers of work opportunities, you have all sorts of courses, you have all sorts of uh, work, uh, working with physically disabled people, mentally disabled people, people who have mental health uh, issues, um, people with dementia, and elderly people who are perhaps a little bit lost in, in, in the world today and come back here and of course immediately, what do they do? They really live their entire lives, not just their childhoods, but their growing up and their young adult lives and so forth. And it's wonderful to listen to some of the stories. So this is a place which is of enormous social as well as economic benefit to the local community. So frankly, in writing the citation, it was quite an easy job for me. It was an easy sell to say, this is an outstanding organisation and it really does warrant Her Majesty the Queen's Award for Voluntary Service. And so I'm absolutely thrilled, Dennis. Congratulations to you, to all of your colleagues. And it's my pleasure, on behalf of the Lieutenancy and the Queen, to make this award to you today. Thank you very much for your uh, time and attendance, and Lord Mayor and Lady Mayoress as well, and to all of you today for, uh, for coming to uh, the museum to see us. Did you want to wrap up, Paul? You, uh, yes, thank you. Yeah. There we go. Uh, thank you, Deputy Lieutenant, uh, Lord and Lady Mayor. Lord, sorry, Lord Mayor and Lady Mayoress and Chairman, thank you very much indeed. That concludes the formal party proceedings. If you'd like to step this way, we have uh, some refreshments available, and then if you keep carrying on round, observing the social distance one way system, uh, that, that will take you to the drinks over there. And in a few minutes' time, we will put the key in the cabinet so everyone can take a look. Thank you very much for coming. I would, I would like to detain the party here just for a couple of minutes, because I think there are quite a few people, including myself, who would take like, some more photographs. Of, uh, of handing stuff over and everything. So it'll only take a minute, but everyone, thank you very much for coming. Please enjoy yourselves.